Maxime Bernier was a newsmaker when he served in the cabinet of former Prime Minister Stephen Harper and when he ran for the leadership of the Conservative Party to replace Harper in 2017. But this past summer, after calling his former party, quote, intellectually and morally corrupt, he became the talk of the nation. Now he's launched his own new venture, the People's Party of Canada. And he joins us now to explain why. Bienvenue. Merci. Thank so you very nice much. nice to have you here. Yeah. <clears throat> Tell us about the guiding philosophy of your new party. Actually, it's the same one <clears throat> that I put forward during the leadership campaign for the Conservative Party of Canada uh, a year and a half ago. So all our policies are based on four principles. Individual freedom, personal responsibility, respect and fairness. And I think this is why people like it. We are doing politics differently with serious uh, policies and bold reform that we need here in Canada. Let me ask you to compare your People's Party with what I hear the new Premier of Ontario saying all the time, and that is he is for the people. <laughs> Do you purport to represent the same people? I hope so, yeah. He won his election <laughs> representing these people. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we choose the name the People's Party of Canada uh, for two major reasons. First one, uh, we, uh, we want to do politics differently and not try to please special interest group. And the, the two big parties and are doing that with the NDP also. They try to please special interest group and uh, not working for Canadians. And we want to work for the peoples, and that's very important. And we want to put the power uh, back in people. And so uh, without any compromise, uh, the best example is the, the file of the cartel of supply management. Every parties want to please uh, 19,000 dairy and poultry producers uh, to have votes. And they're using people's money to buy votes. And for us, we are saying, you know, we won't do that. Uh, it would be good for Canadians if we get rid of that. Uh, but yes, we won't please uh, these uh, 19,000 producers, but that's okay because it's the best policy for this country. Consumers will pay less half the price for poultry, milk and eggs. This is a drum you have beat for a very long time, oh, yeah. and uh, you tried to beat it again in the House of Commons this past week. You got up to uh, introduce a motion. We've got the video. Let's have a look. Go ahead, Sheldon, roll it. Mr. Speaker, I seek unanimous consent of the House for the following motion. The government to put the complete abolition of the system of supply management <laughs> on the negotiating table in order to facilitate a new NAFTA agreement with our American partners and bring down the prices of milk, poultry and eggs for Canadian consumers. <laughs> yes? Does the honourable member have the unanimous consent of the House to move the motion? No, there is no consent. You asked yes, and you got a lot of, well, you didn't just get no's. You got booed, you got heckled. What was that like? Well, you know, it's a shame that uh, I'm the only one in the house who wants to have a system that would be good for Canadians. And, uh, you know, I tried and wasn't successful. But I don't understand why politicians want to protect this special interest group. Well, They're... let me pick up on that, because you call yeah. them special interests. But, you know, political parties, I don't have to tell you, are made up of coalitions of various groups. Yeah. You know, the supply management, those farmers are one group. Who's in your coalition? Who's in your tent? The people. <laughs> okay, but who? Which people? Uh, you know, Canadian consumers. Canadian consumers. I don't need... <clears throat> Uh, what I need, I want them, what I want, I want them, the producers on their supply management, to be able to export their products. And they're doing a good products, good meal, good cheese, and uh, the good, the, with good quality. So they're not able to export right now because of that system. And I want them to be able to export and to be able to be more productive. But if we abolish that system, it will be over four or five years, like in other countries mm -hmm. when they did it. So they will have time to adjust. But the worst situation right now is what the Trudeau government, they're doing. They are going with NAFTA in the negotiation. And we know that the President Trump wants us to get rid of that system yep. and we must we must say yes for Canadian consumers and for being sure to have a deal with the U.S. 20% of our economy is uh, depending on free trade with the U.S., so that's important. But what the Trudeau government, they want to do, maybe they will give a part of the market for dairy milk, maybe 5, 10, 15%. That's the worst solution because the producers won't be able to export. The consumers will still pay twice the price for these products, and the taxpayers will have to compensate a huge cost 
to keep that system. I understand how this animates you. You've been talking about it for a long time, but I want to understand more about who's in this people's tent. Because I hear libertarians are in there. I hear, you know, free market uh, economists, people yeah. who believe in a free market economy are in there. Social Democrats are not going to be in there. Farmers are not going to be in there. I, I, I'm not sure. Social no? Demo we can have the support of Social Democrats. The, the, the NDP, who don't believe in, uh, in uh, giving money to big corporations, corporate welfare, mm -hmm. and the only politician who want to abolish corporate welfare. So we can have support from the NDPs. We can have support also from some liberals, Liberals who voted for Jean Chrétien and Paul Martin a couple of years ago because they want a balanced budget and lower taxes, they can, they, they're not seeing that right now in the, with the present Liberal government. So we can have people like that. How about social conservatives? You want them in the tent? They will come. They will come if they, they believe in our values. And I always said that, you know, the, the values that we promote, it's a free market, conservative values, and free market, it is good for for the people, it is good for consumers. Let's talk about just a handful of words that you used to describe your former party yeah. that really caught a lot of attention. You said your former party, the Conservatives, are too intellectually and morally corrupt yeah. to be reformed. I want to go through that and find yeah. out exactly what you mean. Intellectually corrupt, how? Yeah, how? We don't know what they believe in anymore. We don't know what they believe, uh, you know? They have to do polling to know what they believe in. You know, for me, I don't need to do any polling, you know. It's, it's our values and people who like it, perfect, they will come and I will ask them to vote for us. People who don't like what I'm saying and doesn't like what I'm saying, it's okay, just stay at home and vote for another party. But the Conservative Party of Canada and the Liberals and the NDP, they are so focused and, and to, to try to please everybody that uh, that's and they don't please a lot of people, but I don't, I'm not like that. Uh, to win an election, you need to uh, be strong and being a principal politician, and that's what I will try to do, and how, that's what I did in the past. How about morally corrupt? How are they morally corrupt? But morally corrupt, it's it's the conservative philosophy. They, they, what it, tell me tell me one thing of the. Uh, uh, Sheer Andrew Sheer platform. We know that is against Justin Trudeau on taxes, but how how he gonna lower taxes? Uh, Andrew Sheer said during the leadership of the Conservative Party of Canada that it will balance the budget in two years, and now that's not the case anymore. Mm -hmm. So they're afraid to tell the truth to the population. What I'm saying, you know, I will abolish corporate welfare. I will use the money that we save to lower taxes to every single entrepreneur in this country. So morally, they don't, they don't believe in anything anymore. So that's why I'm saying that. I want to put this picture up here. Sheldon, can you go to the picture in the middle of page two, put that up? That was one of the toughest nights of your life, I'm going to guess, because you lost the leadership to Andrew Scheer by less than two points on the 13th ballot. And I'm wondering how much longer after that picture was taken were you starting to think, I may need to form my own party? Uh, no, a year and a half after that. A uh, year and a half? Yeah, because you know, I... Some people think you were, you were thinking of it when you had your hands in the air that night. No, I was relieved that night. I was relieved because I was the candidate for change. I was the candidate with bold reform. And I had only the support of six members of parliament, conservative members of parliament during my leadership campaign. And as you know, on 98 members, uh, conservative members of parliament. So I didn't have the support of the caucus. I was the, 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 the guy that was promoting uh, big reform. And I look at that, 51-49. Do the opposite, 51 for me, 49 for Andrew Scheer. It would have been very tough for me to do the reform that I believe in. And, and With so the whole caucus against you. The caucus against me, you're right. Hmm. So, so I was a little bit relieved. And I said to myself, I will fight inside the party to be sure to try to convince my conservative uh, uh, friends to adopt some of my policies in the campaign because that was popular with 49% of the vote. Mm -hmm. But um, at the, in the beginning of the summer, uh, I, had, uh, I, I said to myself, I tried to, uh, to uh, convince the party to adopt some of our ideas for the next uh, platform, for the next election, and it was a no. So at that time, I said, okay, I don't have any time to waste with the Conservative Party of Canada. I have two choices, to go back in the private sector or to create our own party and taking the same ideas that 
they are very popular and, and fight for that, and that's mm -hmm. what I decided. Here's some of the feedback. You yeah. have heard tons. You yeah. have really made a splash, I have to say. Here's what some of your former colleagues have had to say. Go ahead, Sheldon, roll it. Maxime decided that he was going to go his own way and put his own personal ambitions first. So that's his choice. He'll have to live with that. He's been busy pouting for the last 15 months. He's now finally picked up his ball and bat and didn't like the way the game turned out, and he's left. Conservatives need to be united to win, and I think they are united. I think one man's ego is not going to change that. And then there was this from former Prime Minister Stephen Harper, who said it is clear that Max never accepted the result of the leadership vote and seeks only to divide Conservatives. His decision today to start your own party, allows the Conservative Party of Canada to move forward united behind our leader, Andrew Scheer. They seem to be saying, you're a sore loser. Is that true? No, it is not. It is not. You know, I'm fighting for people who believe in this country, for people who want to have a, a freer and more prosperous country. And they don't have any voice right now. They didn't have any voice, and now they have a voice with our new party, but they didn't have any voice in the Conservative Party of Canada. When people are saying you're devising the, the right, you're, there's no right in Canada. The Conservative Party of Canada is not the right. It is not a right-wing right party. Too, too mushy middle? <laughs> tell, tell me a reform. Do they want to privatize something? No. They want, to they, add, they want to certainly get rid of the carbon tax, which I yeah, su suspect yeah. you support as well. Yeah, for sure, but mm -hmm. that's the only policy that we know. <laughs> do, do they want to have a discussion about the equalization formula, that it's unfair for Canadians? Do they want to have a discussion about having a universal health care system with private delivery of services and public delivery of services? No, they don't want to have that kind of discussion. It's important for the future of this country. So there's no right. So we are... We are the party who represent people who, who believe in free markets and freedoms and having a smaller government, a more efficient government. So, and we will be able to be the alternative uh, of the, the, the Trudeau's alternative because we can have people from other parties that can be with us if they want to have big reform. Tony Clement supported you for yes, leader. Yes, He was your campaign chair, I think. Uh, he was right. a, One of them. Yeah, he was an important yeah. player. Okay, Tony Clement uh, has, has said that if you are successful enough in taking even just 5% of the conservative vote, let's call it the center-right vote for lack of a better expression, if you even win 5% of the vote in the next election, you will really hurt the conservative party and a lot of members will lose their seats because some of them came in with less than a 5% margin. And he says, under those set of circumstances, Justin Trudeau wins again. I know you don't want that to be your legacy, letting Trudeau, letting the Liberals win yeah, more. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But it could be, right? That could be what it turns out to be. Everything can happen in politics. Hmm. But what I want to do, I want to be the alternative. We will build a strong party all across the country. We are at maybe 11% in the pool right now. Who's we? The, the, our party. People's the, party the, is the at 11? Yeah, 11. How do you know? Anyway, I, I'll, I'll look at the last poll, 11%. So a new party, 11% in the poll, and we have a year before the election. Mm -hmm. So we, we, can, we just have to grow there. When I started the leadership campaign, as a candidate, I was at 5%, and I finished that campaign at 49%. Now we are starting this movement. It is not only just a political party. It is a movement with people all across the country. We are starting that at 10% in the poll. So we, we will grow and we will be the alternative. You won't know this, but eight years ago on this program, we had five guests come in yeah. and talk about you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you do know. And one of them was a Canadian historian by the name of Bob Plamondon, who had written a book about the Conservatives. And he made a very interesting comparison of you to somebody else. Yeah. You want to hear that clip? Yeah, please. Here we go. Sheldon, let's go. As you consider all of the people who've led the Conservative Party over the years, how does he either fit or not fit in with that profile? Well, I uh, can't really say that he fits in with any of them um, <laughs> in particular. Uh, certainly none of them have been, you know, uh, ideologues or uh, very far to the right on fiscal issues. And on the Constitution, I think he, he, re he resembles more some provincial politicians. But the fellow who I, who I think he most resembles uh, in terms of uh, style and, uh, and approach and being provocative, although he's the antithesis of him in terms of the philosophy that he adapts, but uh, it's Pierre Trudeau. <laughs> what do you think of that comparison? <laughs> but you know what I like from that? Pierre Trudeau believe in a kind of a socialist country. 
and he was fighting for what he believed. So I'm fighting for what I believe. What is my goal in, in politics is to convince people and about the the freedom policies, and I like to do that. So Pierre Elliott Trudeau was the opposite of that, but I think it's a it's a nice comp comparison. I don't have any problem with that. And the opposite on on the intellect, what I believe. Uh, but I'm fighting for what I believe, like Trudeau did. He was a strong federalist, and uh, he, he, uh, he, he, he was fighting for having a charter of right and the Constitution back. So uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau uh, is part of a Canadian history. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, uh, I hope that with what, what we will do in the future, that people remember, you know, Bernie and the People's Party of Canada did a lot of good, chance for the, good changes for this country. And you should be so lucky as to win four elections like Pierre Trudeau did. <laughs> you wouldn't mind that at all, I'm sure. I want to ask you for a second about... Um, okay, let's go here. Preston Manning, of course, the founder of the Reform Party, yeah. used to say, you turn on a light and you are going to attract some moths. Yeah. <clears throat> and I want to know how concerned you are that some people who are alt-right, white nationalists, anti-immigration, uh, that kind of thing, see you, for whatever reason, as somehow their champion. I told them, I told them that they're not welcome in our party. Uh, they're, they're not sharing the, the same values of, of us. And so they're not welcome and will, uh, you know, the people who will represent our party, the candidates all across the country, will have to share our values and will be sure to have the right people. So. I, I'm not afraid of that because if <laughs> I told them, you know, don't come in our party if you try to change our principle, you you won't be. I will impose, yes, I will impose our principle and people will be able to discuss, but around our principles. So if you don't believe in immigration, you're not welcome. So you're pro-immigration? For sure. I'm Same pro levels as today? No, I said in the campaign that during the leadership, and I still believe in that, that we must have a little bit less immigration, more economic immigrants, and uh, and um, and not like Justin Trudeau right now in the government. They want to increase that at 340,000 in two years from now, and they receive a report asking for 450,000 a year. So that's only a report, but they want more and more and more. I just want to have a question, and I want to have a little bit less, and I want our country to be like that in 20 years from now. I don't have, want, that, want us to have the challenge that the other, some European countries are having about the integration of our new uh, immigrants. Meaning new immigrants should embrace Western values. Yes, and they are. They are doing that right now. So I just want to have a debate, and, and, but we need more economic immigrants. We, mo we need more uh, uh, students immigrants. That's easier for them to integrate when you study, when you are studying here for three years, you know our values. I want people to come here and, and share our values. And that's happening right now. So if we need more of that, what do we need less of? <clears throat> you know, the ratio, we have economic immigrants, reunification of family, mm -hmm. uh, uh, students, and refugees. I think we must have a little bit less of reunification of family, a little bit, a little bit less of refugees, more economic immigrants. And, and so let's have this debate. And the only one who wants to have this debate uh, at the federal scene. So uh, I think it's a, it's a fair debate to have. You are pretty tough on the liberals, I have to say. You say that current liberal government has created a cult of diversity yeah. that will destroy the country. I want to know more about what that means. You know, I'll give you an example. Justin Trudeau is always saying, you know, diversity is our strength. And that's not the case. It's what unites us. It's our strength. You know, that's, that's the case. You build a country f with people who share the same values. So diversity of values, I don't like that. And some journalists said, oh, Maxim is uh, against racial diversity. That's not true. I never said that. <clears throat> people who don't believe in our values, I think that you know, they must not come in our country. It's Western civilization values. And we were able to have a lot of people coming from different countries for the last 60 years. So they will come, but they, were, they, must, they must share our values. So I, I like diversity. I want people to come here to, to, ter to, to tolerate diversity to, uh, as you know, uh, they know that men and women are equal before the law and all these Western civilization values. But you mentioned some European countries that you think have 
have gone too far in the wrong direction. So take us 10, 20 years down the road. If we keep going the way we're going, what do you worry Canada will look like? I, I, I'm worried that uh, the integration won't be at the best and uh, we can have ghettos, like I said. So mm -hmm. let's have that discussion right now. And people are saying, Maxime, we don't have a problem. People are integrating our country very well. I said, yes, but I don't want us to have a problem in 20 years from now and just have that discussion. Let's look 13 months into the future. We are going to have a federal election. You're a brand new party. Yes. What do you think you can achieve? I can achieve. I, I, I want to win the election. Okay, I, I understand that you want to win, but I look back over the last 151 years of Canadian history, yeah. and it's only ever liberals or conservatives who've won. Only ever. I can give you an example, maybe not in our country, in France. I'm not a socialist, but Macron was a socialist. 11 months before the presidential election, mm -hmm. he quit the Socialist Party, created his own party, and now he's the president. So that can happen. It can happen in France. It's never happened in Canada. Ah, why not? Well, uh, I, I guess why not, but yeah. it never has. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a big challenge, I agree with sure. you. But I'll have, I'll have candidates in every writings. You're sure Good. about that? Oh, for sure. You will have candidates in all 338 writings. For sure. Writings. We are mm -hmm. building the party right now. Before the end of December, we'll have writing association all across the country. And in January, we'll, uh, we'll, have, uh, we'll work on the candidates, and we'll have candidates, and our goal will be to have, and we will be able to have 338 candidates in every writing. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. And we have a platform. The platform that we're having right now, I have a year to explain the platform to Canadians. Mm -hmm. That's the big difference between me and the, Lib and the Liberals and, and the Conservatives. We don't know what they believe in. They have to do polling. Mm -hmm. For me, you know that. And in a year from now, I'm doing, I will do some media like that and speak about our platform. For, I'm, I'm in a campaign right now. So mm. I'm starting the campaign right now. Don't take this the wrong way, OK? Yeah. Don't take You're this the wrong way. You're a good guy, so I won't. <laughs> Don't take this the wrong way. Because uh, your English is way better than my French. Yeah. But your English, is it good enough to be Prime Minister of Canada? I think so. I think so. It's I, but I will have always that accent, and uh, mm -hmm. I won't be able to change that. But I can be a little bit better in grammatical rules sometimes. Uh, but yes, but the more I practice, practice the, more, the better I am. I, I, am. So, I know that they used to joke about Jean Chrétien not yeah, speaking yeah, yeah, either yeah, official yeah, yeah, language particularly yeah, yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, your French is impeccable. Your English is great. Yeah, but, but I still have to improve. Every mm -hmm. time that I'm doing an interview, I'm looking at the interview after that and listening what I said, and I try to uh, correct my English. And uh, the more interview I'll do, the better I'll be. You know that in politics today, whenever a leader makes an announcement, there's always a big pack of people behind them. When you made your announcement, there was nobody with yes. you. Yes. At what point should we expect to see some relatively big names up there with Maxime Bernier? In, in a couple of weeks from now. That's the beginning of our party. My preoccupation right now is to build the head office of the party. We're doing that. It will be ready next week. And after that will be to the executive of the party. Who, is this? Who are these people with me at the executive of the party? You'll know that. I'll do another press conference. And maybe they will be with me. Maybe not because they're very uh, prestigious Canadian and busy, busy Canadian. Maybe they, they will be with me in Ottawa. Maybe not. But yes, just wait and see. And a couple of weeks from now, you'll know. Uh, the people who are running the party with me. Any current Conservative MP is going to go with you? No, no. And I don't try to have their support. Like mm -hmm. I told you, I didn't have their support during the leadership. And mm -hmm. I, I, and well, I'm, a few of them did. I think five of them did, didn't they? Yeah, but yeah. six. They decided six, okay. six, but they decided to stay with the Conservative Party. Okay. So the majority of them, they don't share our values. So I don't try to have them on board. Okay. I'm going to ask you again, I'm going to ask your indulgence because I'm going to ask one more question, which is, um, you know what your nickname is, right? Yeah. What do they call you? Mad Max. Mad Max, yeah. right, after I'm, that yeah. Mel Gibson movie. Do you like that nickname? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Why? I, because I'm mad. I'm mad at the Liberal Party and the big deficit that they're doing. I, I'm mad that we have a government in Ottawa that is interfering in provincial jurisdiction and don't respect the Constitution. I'm mad at the way that politicians are doing politics today. I'm mad that all the politicians in Ottawa, they want to fight for a special interest group and not fighting for the interests of the Canadian consumers in the, 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 the file of uh, supply management. I'm mad at all that. So yes, you can call me Mad Max. Well, I won't call you that. I'll call you Monsieur <laughs> Bernier, but I understand now that it's you don't take it as a bad one. 
You did win your seat by the largest margin of any conservative MP, I think, in the Beauce. Yeah. You're very popular yes. in Quebec. Yeah. Can you stretch that popularity to the rest of the country? Yes, people in Alberta, they call me the Albertan from Quebec huh. because I, I, we share the same values, the real free market conservative bring values. That, bring that up. Go ahead. Pick number two. There's your logo and there's the Reform Party <laughs> logo. It's pretty close. Come yeah, on. It's pretty close. You've got to yeah. admit it's pretty yeah. close. So yeah. that's why they call you the Albertan from Quebec, eh? But, and they, they like the ideas. And mm. so, yes, uh, I'm popular in Quebec in my writing but I'm popular also all across the country. Because the way that we are doing politics is different. We don't try to please special interest group. And, and I'm not afraid to tell the truth to Canadians. What I think is the best policies are the best policies for this country. So uh, we'll see, but... Uh, That's exactly we'll... what I was going to say. Yeah. On verra. Yeah, on verra, yeah. Exactly. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Bernier. Merci moi qui vous Thank you for coming into TVO tonight to share your views. That's Maxime Bernier, leader of the new People's Party of Canada. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. Helping businesses stay on the right side of change with strategic thinking, insightful decisions, and business leadership. Are you on the right side of change? Ask an Ontario CPA.